In this lesson, we're going to introduce uh, inverse functions. And the idea of an inverse function is that it's supposed to reverse another function. What that means is that um, it's going to undo it. And we'll talk about that in another lesson. Um, but we are the main thing is, in order to figure out what an inverse is, we're going to switch the domain and range. Um, and when we do that, we're going to have a visual. There's something going on with the visual. It's going to be reflected over this line of y equals x, which we're going to do that and show that here in a second. Um, biggest thing is, if you want to figure out what an inverse is, you just switch the x and y. Um, so here is an original set of points. And we have all these different points. These are the ones in the red. And we are going to switch them. So to find an inverse, we it's straightforward as just swapping the x and the y. So negative 8, 5 becomes 5, negative 8. So um, if we plot all those points, um, and we plot the reds, and then we plot the inverses, there's definitely something going on. It's just not a bunch of random points that... It says that we have this reflection going on. So if we draw a 45 in here, which is just a y equals x, this um, right across here, those two points are inverses of each other. And it's not a coincidence that they are the exact same distance from the 45, which is the y equals x, and they are perpendicular to that line. So if you connect the dots perpendicularly, you're going to see that they're the exact same distance. So if you want to cross for those, cross for those, for those. So they're perfectly perpendicular, same exact distance um, to the 45. So if you take any of these coordinates, so if you take 5, 3, and you do the inverse of it, it's going to be 3, 5, so 3, 5. And then if you do 2, 1, that's going to get you a 1, 2. If you do 0, 3, that's going to get you a negative 3, 0. And negative 5, negative 5 doesn't switch. So it's negative 5, negative 5. All right. So um, 2, 1 becomes a 1, 2. And 0, 3 becomes a negative 3, 0. Negative 5, 5 doesn't move. So if you connect these dots, um, that is a reflection. So if you look that they're perpendicular to um, the 45, and it's a reflection, the red reflects over to this. So, um, some of the terminology that you're going to be looking for is, they're going to ask, is a, um, is a function a one-to-one -one function? Which basically just means that your original is a function and your inverse is a function. Because not all inverses are going to be functions. They won't pass the vertical line test. So, um, uh, so a one-to-one -one just means original and inverse are functions. All right, so that's the biggest thing. So, um, and remember that a, a function is you're not, you don't have a repeat in your x's. If you do have a repeat in your x's, then you don't have a different y value. So each x can only go to one y. So if you're looking down the inverse values, which is just the x's switching with the y's, um, you don't have a repeat in your x's. So that's not true for this one. Um, so you have a negative 2, 7, and you switch all these things around, and you have a 4 going to a negative 1, and you have a 4 going to a positive 1. That's where your problem is. So the inverse, the original is a function, but the inverse is not a function. Not that you, does, that you can't find the inverse, um, it just doesn't pass vertical line test, so it's not um, considered a one-to-one. -one. So all that means is, um, actually you can check, and we'll do a visual of this here in a second, that um, a horizontal line test is going to tell you, because a vertical line test tells you whether your original is a function, a horizontal line test is going to tell you whether your inverse is going to be a function before you even graph the inverse. So it's kind of a helpful little tool. So we'll get that on the next, best, next lesson.